excuse me, it's time to start now. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me at the back? Yeah. Sorry about my voice. I think I, um, I, I still have a, I still have a cord. Um, so, are there are there any like uh, concerns that we have, you know, before we start uh, about the test or anything else that might have? Uh, except for the one person that spoke to me earlier, we will continue our conversation afterwards. Uh, <coughs> any concerns? General concerns? Are we okay? We good? All right. Thanks. Um, so, so something really interesting happened yesterday. Well, on Friday, I got this email, um, and someone you know sent through a solution to me. Right? Uh, remember the bounty from from the previous lab exercise that we had? Um, and so what I did was, well, I haven't finished testing it, but what I did was I, I immediately thought about some of the things that we did in the previous class, in the previous lecture. And so what I did was I, 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 I really thought long and hard about creating you know, appropriate test cases. So what I did is, uh, bearing in mind that, uh, remember the, 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 the income tax, you know, taxation uh, guideline uh, splits up you know, different income income streams into six bands. So what I did was I came up with on bound, above bound, uh, and below bound uh, values for all the six uh, bands, right? And then we, we, we also know from the links that I, I included in the, in the question that, <clears throat> that age is a factor, right? So the taxation is different for uh, individuals that are less than 60 years old and individuals that are above the age of 60, well, 65, sorry, not 60. And so what I did was I created separate on bound, above bound, and below bound, where well, I picked out values for um, individuals that would potentially fall you know, in the age range that is less than 65, and for those that would fall in the age range that is above 65, right? And then combined the two. I came up with appropriate test cases, right? So one other thing, right? Just a, a quick story here. So in my previous life, I, you know, I, I spent some three years. Um, I used to work for a telecommunications company, and it, believe it or not, but I used to check logs for a living, right? The money was good, uh, but I, I thought about it after the class. I, I just figured I'd mention it because, uh, I mean, in hindsight, what I was effectively doing, or what we were doing, what we were paid to do, was to essentially debug potential problems that arose, right? Okay. Great, we'll start with the bang here. Uh, uh, the, the guy at the back, what, what, what is a data type? Uh, uh, column number two, uh, last row, first person. I'm not trying to put you on, on the spotlight here, I'm just trying to you know, get a sense of you know, where we are at, trying to see if people still remember what we've covered in the past, right? Data type. Aha, uh, the person I spoke to earlier. Yes, in corrective lenses, what is a data type? Yeah, fine, give us an example and then we'll proceed. Yes? Sorry? Yeah, so a string is an example of a data type. A float, right, yes. Uh, Aha, the, the person we spent an hour debugging a problem that seemingly was as a result of a, a what? A Boolean value that was outside of a for loop, right? And another example of uh, a data type? An example of a data type? Well, no, known is a type here, yeah, but not, not necessarily a data type, you know. But remember, we, we shouldn't forget these things, you know, Booleans, right? Um, and we're going to look at more, you know, in this class. Um, right, and in subsequent classes, uh, the Thursday class and the Monday class, right? So the thing is, what we've been doing before now is we've, well, perhaps implicitly we've also looked at what we're going to talk about, but what we've been doing before now is looking at, uh, you know, uh, single value data types, right? So uh, the strings of this word, the, the, the numbers, you know, the floats and the ins, those are all single value data types, right? But, but, but we realized early on that, you know, the, there was a challenge in working with those kinds of data types, in particular because there comes a time, you know, when it becomes necessary for us to, to, to apply um, a, a particular uh, action on a group of 
variables or values that have a common trait, right? A classic example here is the palindrome example that we looked at, right? We, we realize that whenever we check for values in between two ranges, we realize that we are pretty much uh, performing the same action on all the numbers that would lie within that range, right? And that's the reason why we, so one of the hints was that we use a list, right? Because it makes life a lot easier, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at, uh, so we're specifically going to look at three data types, right? Um, I haven't really had a chance to kind of ask why tuples are not part of the, um, the course outline. Uh, but just as a, by the way, I think we'll probably just mention, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at what tuples are all about and, you know, how, how we get to create tuples as well, right? Yeah, so it, it, what, what data types essentially do is they, they enable us, you know, to store items of, you know, of the same type or of different types, you know, into one unified single variable, right? So start off with lists. Uh, um, and I would appreciate it if, if people, you know, paid particular attention to the characteristics um, and the way in which we will be evoking the methods that fall under the list class, right? Very important. So, so list essentially uh, make it possible for us to store uh, more than one value, right, in one single variable that are by nature ordered, right? But besides that, the elements the elements within the list could potentially be of different types, right? So you, you, you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily restricted to storing, uh, let's say as an example, just integer values in a single list, right? You could, if you want, or if your implementation required that you store types of a different type, you could potentially store uh, integers, floats, you know, strings. And interestingly enough, you can also store lists within lists, right? Um, and we'll get to see examples when you look at, you know, multidimensional arrays, right? And, and just like, like we did with strings, right, seeing as lists are sequences by nature, right, we can actually uh, pull out the items that we're interested in in those lists by making use of indices, right? And so the indexing just like with strings starts from zero and ends where the length of the list minus one, right? So an in index less. Or it ends at uh, index minus one, right? This is, this is interesting because uh, not so long ago, someone uh, paid me a visit. As, I don't know if Dorothy is here. But she paid, she paid me a visit and, and yeah, so she, 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 she came across a question, I think, on page, I don't know if it's 178 or 158. Um, it's, it's, it's on functions, but, but the thing is she, the thing is, I, I, was, I was trying to make her understand that the, the, the reason that the previous example was not working was merely as a result of the fact that lists are mutable, right? And what we mean by that is that you can change the values that are already contained within your list, right? I like strings, right? You have a string, uh, hello, for instance. There is no ways you can, uh, you can tell Python or the Python interpreter to say, I want the character that is at index zero to be a C instead of an H <laughs> without creating a completely new copy of the, of the string variable, right? Lists are mutable. Right? Strings are immutable, right? Integers, floats are immutable, right? So here's the thing. I th I think that so the, so the, the easy thing about, you know, the, the data structures that we're going to be looking at is it's so very easy. I think this is probably the easiest, uh, this is probably the easiest topic we'll ever get to do here. Seriously, data structures, right? Uh, so how we go about creating this is pretty simple. There's, there's really two ways, at least that I know of. Uh, could be more, I don't think so. But anyway, two, two, uh, two main ways. So the, the, the common way, the common one, and I think this is pretty much something that most of us have played around with, is uh, you, you just create a variable, right? Use the assignment operator and assign it to uh, a sequence of items that you want to contain within 
uh, that you want to store within the list, right? Excuse me. But, but, but the thing here is there's, 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 there's something very important about the syntax there, right? You have to make sure that you have your square brackets. I don't think that there's, uh, I, 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 I don't think that there's any other name for square brackets, I, I, at least not that I know. <laughs> it's square brackets, right? Um, and you notice that um, you, you must run these things afterwards or within, during the class, right? they were just to confirm, right? You notice that if you, if you evoke the type function on the, the list that we've created in line number one here, this is what the Python interpreter says, right? It tells you to say, you know, the, the data type of the variable that you created in one is what? It's a list. It's a class, right? It's a list. It's a class of type list here, right? So line number, line number four shows us yet another way in which we can go about creating our list. Um, not so very common unless if you are trying to coerce, let's say, uh, I don't know if you can coerce a set into a list, uh, or if you're trying to coerce a string, you can coerce a string into a list, right? So you should try this out, right? Create, um, uh, you, you create, in fact, you can try it out right now, right? What we mean by coercion here is we're saying, uh, sorry about that, we are saying that we can create a list, list x, right, by evoking the list function Right? And what happens is that our, oh, I see now. Uh, I was in JavaScript mode, sorry. So we, when we coerce the, uh, the list, you notice that it, it actually does that, right? So, I mean, so you can feed, you can feed the list function actually with, with other, uh, other so, so you can actually feed it other variables or other data types that are by nature sequences, right? Uh, so strings. A set as well, I think. All right, very important. So uh, to subject our points here, just the two main ways in which we can create lists here, very important, right? Um, and this is the example I just gave. And you notice that if you, if you run the, the type function on all these different variables that we've created, the result is the same. The Python interpreter tells you that it's a class of type lists here, right? Uh, uh, and again, in line one, I was just illustrating the fact that uh, you can create a list of like varying uh, data types, right? So we have a uh, var list here contains uh, integers, strings, a Boolean, and it also contains another list in there, right? Works, <clears throat> right? And so, so the other thing I want us to remember here is that if, if, a list, if a list is a data type, then what that means is that we can potentially use lists as what? As parameters, as function parameters, right? And we can also return, we can also define functions that are able to return values that are of type list, right? And this was the, so this was the rationale behind the palindrome um, um, uh, question number one in the previous lab, laboratory exercise. Uh, uh, that's the reason why we, we gave that hint. We said that uh, we must use list, right? So here's, here's one way in which I, I mean, I went about doing this, right? So I defined, uh, just as a, I defined a simple function that takes in, you know, the specified range, you know, the start and ending uh, value, right? And what I did was I, um, so I, I create a, a variable result that I uh, assign to an empty list here, right? And then I, of, of course, I perform my, my logic that checks to see if uh, the number within that range is a prime number, right? And then, at the end of it all, of course, I'm, I'm appending all the numbers that are prime numbers, right, to my list. At the end of it all, I return what? A list, right? So what this, what this function fx prime does is it takes in a range of numbers, and then it returns a list of prime numbers, right? And then I defined another function, right? Uh, that is, it takes in the same range of values, but what it does this time around is it, in my logic, obviously, it, it actually, uh, it, it, it flips over to, to, to reverse the, uh, what do you call this? It, it reverses the, the number, for instance, if the number is 12, then it flips it over and it becomes 21, right? And the, the, the idea here is to try and create two functions that both return lists, right? The first one returns the list of prime numbers. The second one returns 
the equivalent of what you have here, but then each of the values is what? Is reversed. All right. And then finally, I create my final function that takes in two lists now. Right? And it does a comparison for each, for each of the in indices, right? For, so at index zero, uh, are the values the same, right? right? And so the, the logic is not important, but what's important is that the final function takes in two parameters which are of type list, right? And I, I could just as well just feed it uh, the evocation, the result of evoking this and that into here. And I have my answer, right? All right? So there's, there's actually a couple of operations we can perform, just quickly, a couple of operations we can perform on this as well here, right? Uh, we can concatenate lists, just like strings and numbers, right? And the result of concatenating lists results in uh, a merged list, right? In that order, right? We can repeat a list. Um, I, was, I was trying so very hard when I was preparing these slides to kind of think of an example where I could like a, a real world example that I could, I could give in class and I couldn't come up with one, like an example that would you know, mandate me or require me to sort of like repeat my list, right? But I suppose the point to note here is that when you repeat your list, what you end up with is, is this, right? Um, you can index lists as, as just as I've already mentioned, just like we do with strings, right? Uh, indexing starts at zero, right? Zero, one, two, right? Minus one gives you the last. Uh, value, which is three here. We can slice lists as well, right? And this is the thing here. And the, the power of lists actually can be leveraged by the fact we, we, can, we can loop through our lists, right? So the, the, the syntax is pretty much the same. Can we loop through strings? Yeah, we can, right? It's of type sequence, right? It's iterable as well. So we can loop through strings, right? Syntax is pretty much the same, right? And we can, we can check for membership as well, right? So try and check to see if uh, a particular list, a particular value, if a particular value is, is, is C in, in X, right? All right. Just, just quickly here, before we, we get to specific methods that we, I, I thought this was very important for the purposes of those of us who don't know. Uh, I felt it would be important for us to speak about this, right? Uh, aha, the gentleman in corrective lenses. Um, what, now we already know what a function is, right? But what, what is the same, what is similar between line number six, seven, and, and nine here? <laughs> Sorry? Well, we asked him, she's trying to help, uh, thank God. Oh, oh. okay. She, so, they all, what? Oh, come on. Well, yeah, I suppose it. <laughs> I did special paper two when I was like, writing qualifying exams and we did all these like pattern recognition stuff and come on, but, but okay, besides the hashtags and what else is, is similar? Well, in, in relation to functions, okay, let's, let's try and be more specific here. In relation to functions, what is similar between lines number six, seven, and nine? Exactly, right, so we are, we are evoking functions in, in all of those lines, but we're doing it we're, we're doing it in three distinct ways, right? In the first case, in line number six, what we're doing is we're evoking this function after importing the math package. We are evoking it by explicitly saying our, our math.pow you know, function of, or our power function actually resides in the math module, right? right? In line number seven, what we're doing is we're evoking an already, or a user-defined function which we've defined between line number three and four here. Right. But what we're doing in line number nine here is something that we've done, but, but what we're doing is we are evoking that function on an instance of an existing class. And in this case, our class is, is a string, right? And this is very important. And so the, the, the naming actually changes here because 
Upper is not, upper is a function, yes, but the, 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 the correct way of classifying upper is actually a method. So upper is a method. So a method is a function that is defined, it's a class level function, uh, a function defined within a class, right? Right? Um, and how you go about evoking it is you, uh, you have your, your instance, you know, your, your class instance, uh, and then followed by the dot operator and the name of the function that you want to evoke. And that's, that's why we're able to evoke, uh, let's say, hello.upper, hello.lower, hello.title, uh, hello. is it split, and all those fancy string functions that we've played around with, right? Because all those methods are defined within the string class, right? There is no ways you can do this. This is, it's, it's, it's not possible. You can't do this, right? I mean, I, I would probably collapse if this would work. So, because, because true, because true is, true is a Boolean, it's not a string, right? Do I understand what's going on here? I hope we are, it's very important. So list methods now. So the string class has uh, some really interesting methods, right? Uh, ones that we'll find useful uh, for the exercise and perhaps the test and the exam as well. Uh, we'll start with append, right? Um, so assuming you've created your, your list instance, uh, your instance of uh, a list, which in this case is var list, right? Var is just variable, just my naming convention here. And it contains numbers one up to four here, right? Uh, we're already familiar with line number one. Everybody knows what line number one is. We're creating a list here, right? What append does, is, so, so a couple of important things. Append takes in, in relation to function, append takes in a single, a single parameter, right? A single formal parameter. Yes, I'm period, so, yeah? Oh, sorry, I didn't see, hi. For the upload, you have to. Should, I should be asking questions so that we start, you know, I, I realize that I've, I've, been, I've been interacting with mostly the raw and there's, there, there's two ladies, there's a lady who normally sits, I don't know where. I, I want it to be like an all-inclusive kind of like, you know, scenario here. Yes, sorry. you have to assign the string to a variable first before you... No, you don't have to. Um, you, you can, we can do it, um, just quickly show you. We can, we can, we can do it with a string here. Uh, uh she's going, right? I hope I'm not boring here, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, so you don't necessarily have to create um, a variable. I can change here, am I being boring? Oh, okay. Uh, does that answer your question? You don't necessarily have to create a variable, so you can, you can invoke the method on, um, on a string even if it's not a variable. Right? Cool. So here's the thing, append takes in a single parameter, right, a single formal parameter. In this case, it's x, could be anything, right? And then it returns nothing, right? It returns none, right? We, we, we remember from, from the function class that uh, in Python, more Python, in actual fact, Python doesn't necessarily return nothing when there's no return statement. It implicitly returns none, right? So there's a return type of type none type. So it returns none. So the append method takes in a single formal parameter, right? And returns a value of none type. Right? But what happens is, look at line number two here. What happens is if the moment you evoke the append method, right, with a value on an already existing list, the new value that you're trying to append is slotted at the end of the list, right? So essentially what's happening here is it's being, it's being inserted at uh, index length of list, right? Yeah. Oh, hi. Sorry. Yes, you can. Uh, so you, you can. You can. What he's asking is, if we had a, a, a list L with uh, one and two, right? A uh, list L, and we wanted to append A, which is uh, a string, right? We. His question is, can we do this, right? Can we do this? And I said yes because we have that. Right. So it doesn't have to be like an actual value. Um, it can be a variable as well. Okay. Um, what list.extend does, and please don't forget the, 
You see, the, the reason I have like a, the, the reason I have the list in Golems is I'm trying to remind us that that is a, a placeholder for any type of list instance, right? So what list.extend does is it takes in the same number of parameters as a pen, right? In this case, x, right? But what it does is, instead of uh, just appending a single value, it's, it's a lot more flexible because it makes it possible for you to append more than one value, right? Uh, provided that value is, I think, a sequence type. And whenever I make mention of you know, sequences, I think of strings, right? I always think of streams. If you evoke, oh yeah, hi. Can you <laughs> Yes, you can, because the list is a sequence type. Uh, so, so we have we have L here, right? And we want to append K, right? K has uh, just uh, a list A, right? We can append K, right? And K is there. So what you're having is like a, a semi-multi-dimensional array, right? Because there's a list within a list, right? Sorry? The square brackets. Uh, what do you mean getting rid of? Like list within a list. It wants to make it a non-list in a list. Like, it wants to put all the values in the one list. Yeah. I'm, 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 so he wants to put all the values in K into L. Like putting the entire list of K into L. Yeah, let's make it a single list. There you've got a list and a list of the list. Let's um, make it just one list with the second list values part of the first one. Why? Oh, so you, you want us to put A in yeah. programmatically, you mean? Yeah, you could do that. I mean, we'll look at other methods. You could do that, actually. Like, like you can. So remember, remember excuse me. Remember, what's up, man? I, remember. Uh, why am I saying what's up here? Uh, <laughs> so we can do this programmatically, right? We, and there's, there's a couple of easier ways of doing it, but uh, from what we know from you know, previous classes, we can, we can, we can actually uh, identify this, right? Uh, and, then, and then do that, we, get, we have our A, right? right? And then you can, you can actually, uh, that's the thing here, you can actually uh, and this is getting really interesting. We have, uh, aha, this is really interesting. This is A. <laughs> aha. Still working still. You can just use it still. <laughs> so I was, I, was, I was trying to see if we can we can remove this programmatically because he wants to see, well, he was asking if we could do it. But we can do it. We don't want to waste time in class here. We can do it afterwards, right? We can do it. We can remove we can remove uh, this uh, list, right? And then get the value, uh, and then just return the list uh, up to here, and then append that value. That's one way of doing it. But there's plenty of ways in which we can do it, right? Extend, right? We're not counting the methods here. You can count them afterwards. I didn't even count how many methods there are, but there's, there's, kind of, there's, a, there's a couple of them here. So uh, uh, some, some important things to remember here is this, uh, you know, the return types, uh, the formal parameters that the methods take in, right? And what the methods actually do, right? Insert. So what insert does is notice from, from, the, from the signature there that it takes in two, two formal parameters, right? I've, I've, I've actually uh, named them i and x in that case. Your i is the, the specific position, you know, the index position within an existing list where you want to slot that, that item x, right? It also returns none. And you notice what we're doing here. Uh, so if, if you look at lists and the other data stru structures, uh, what we're what we're looking at is what what's famously uh, well, what's famously called crude, right? We're looking at uh, we're trying to see how we can create, right? We are, we're trying to see how we can read items, right, from these things. We're trying to see how we can update the list, right? And then we're trying to see how we can we can page things from there. So how we can delete things from the list? Does delete have an e? Yes. yes. So. Yeah. Okay. Right. So this is what we're doing here. Uh, yes. I wanted to ask a question on the insert functions. Yeah. Um, 
doesn't kind of take in two arguments, whereas what you need to insert and where you need to insert. Yeah, that's what yes, the high. No, it actually takes in where you want to, not what you need to insert and where, but where you want to insert it and what. what. You mustn't mix the two together because it won't work. So it might not work. So by default, it just adds it to the end. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so that's the thing, right? Where, when you specify, let's say we have, uh, we have our list. Uh, uh, an example I gave here is probably we have our list, uh, our list L, and we want to insert what? We want to insert at position zero. That's at the first index, right? We want to insert the. Ah, we want to say hello, right? And what happens if you take the zero away? Sorry? What happens if you take the zero away? Oh, it doesn't, doesn't work. Functions, right? It won't work. It won't work because your function, uh, functions, right? Yeah, it's a formal, par it's a formal required parameter. So if it were a default uh, formal parameter, then perhaps it would work. But in this case, it's a required parameter. Uh, so the example in the PowerPoint is wrong. Oh, shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so I apologize, sorry. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. I tell people that, you know, uh, I've been here four years, and you know, along the way, we pick up uh, good and bad habits, and perhaps this is one of those things I've picked up. <laughs> the other bad habit I've picked up is coffee, right? I'm, a, I'm hooked on coffee. I get these terrible headaches if I don't drink coffee. I don't know why I started drinking coffee. Yeah. So uh, thanks for that. Line number two here, I'll, I'll, I'll make a uh, correction. Line, line number two here is supposed to take in, um, <laughs> right? I was actually thinking of a pen when I was doing this, I'm, I'm guessing, right? Which, which is retarded, yeah. What, what do you think? Oh, so, hi. This is more interactive. This is more fun. Now I know it's, uh, yeah? Sorry? Oh, from the end. You want us to make it what? <laughs> Minus one. Uh, guys, have you noticed what we are doing here? We are shifting things here, right? We are shifting things, but things change slightly when you do it from the end. Because you start pushing them afterwards. Sorry? It's ordered. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, <laughs> Does that make sense now? When you start from the when you start from like the opposite end, it, it act, the shifting starts uh, an item before at the position an item before. What? Uh, yeah, which is an interesting. Aha, uh, uh -huh. Sesoto. How? Why? What? What would we? What would we have to do? You're not paying attention here. We we're picking, cherry picking here. What would we have to do if we wanted to evoke the insert method and we wanted to insert an item at the end? What would we have to do? Negative zero. Sorry? Negative zero. Oh, we already, we already saw that negative zero doesn't work, right? Come on. Uh, so not negative zero, come on. <laughs> this guy, right? <laughs> and we're on camera here, come on. Um, I said you not. But we've done this before. What? How? How do we know? Um, thank you. Length of list, right? Because we know that the last item is at length, length of list minus one. So, if we want to slot it at the end, it's just going to be length of list. Just like with not strings, but you know. Thanks. 
insight is a do you think it's a it's a create, read, update, or delete method? Ah, it's update, right? Thank you. Uh, we're updating our list. We've already created it, right? So I, I just put this up. This is normally used in like for those of you who've played around with web applications. I just I put it up to remind us, you know, about like in case you forget some of the methods, it's usually easier to crude, right? So what remove does is it takes in a single form of parameter, right? And what it does is it removes the first instance of that item that you're trying to remove. So if you have a list that has, say, uh, 121111, and you want to remove one, then what it will do is it will just remove the first one, right? And then you have 2111. Right? Easy stuff. There's an example here. You know what, this, what, makes, it, what makes this easy? Functions are already there. Uh, you just have to remember the four parameters that you need to feed these functions, methods now we know, and to also remember the return types of, the, of, of these methods, right? Or these class level functions, right? And, and it's pretty easy to figure out what sort of return type like a particular method you know, has, right? You know that if you're inserting something, I mean, why would you want to return something, right? Well, perhaps to signal, maybe a Boolean flag to signal the fact that the insertion process was successful, perhaps, right? But in most cases, it's just, it becomes useless for you to return anything because all you're doing is you're just manipulating already existing content, right? So remove takes in a single. Uh, there's more, right? There's pop, right? Is, is pop a, a, is it a palindrome, is it? It is, right? Thank you. Pop, right? Not the pop, the pop. So pop, pop, pop takes in uh, a single optional parameter here. This is very important. A single optional parameter, right? Or a single default parameter, right? Not default, but well, it could be default. Maybe it's nothing. Default is nothing. But it takes in a single optional parameter, right? I've, 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 I've named it I in there. And what it does is, you know, when, when you evoke the pop method on an existing list, what it does is it... If there's no, if you haven't specified an argument when you're evoking that method, what it does is it pops out the item that is at the far end of the list, right, and returns it, right? If you feed it, if you feed it a value, an optional value here, uh, and, and that's the thing here, uh, line number two, a, a question. Ah, hi. Uh, what, what, what do you think we could feed, besides, I've already answered the, yeah, well, I've already answered uh, the, the, the first part, right? We could, if we wanted to pop out six here, we could just call, you know, pop. We could evoke pop on the list, and it would pop up the six, right? But what, what, how, how else can we pop out six? The nice lady. Uh, yes, you. She said it. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. So there's two ways in which we can pop out the last, the last item here. Right. One way is just to evoke pop, without uh, any arguments. Right. And the other way is uh, you must ask questions and ask for output if you want clarification here, or run them like these guys do and most guys there because this is how this thing works. Hands on. It has to be hands on here. Uh, I installed QPython 3 on my phone. I told people, and I, I can run. So there's no excuse these days. This is 2015, people, right? You, you can, no, no, seriously. I mean, if you don't have a, a computer right now, you probably have a phone, and you can, you can run these things on your phone, right? This is how this makes sense, you know, if you actually try them out. Like watching me talk about it, and it doesn't help, you know. Deferring it to tonight or tomorrow, it might not help, right? <clears throat> so. The next method is index, right? Index takes in uh, a single form of parameter, right? So when you're invoking it with uh, a preferred argument, what you do is you feed it with uh, a potential item that you think exists in that list. And what it does is it returns the position in that list, right? So here's the thing. You're not asking questions, but here's the thing. If, if, if we wanted to, to do what? To get the index of uh, CSC. This is what it does. It returns an integer value that corresponds to 
zero, one, two, three. It's always an integer value because it's an index, right? Position, yeah. With the remove function that you used earlier, yeah. um, does it only remove one instance of what you're wanting to remove or all of them? Just one instance. We can try it out, actually. First one that it comes across. Yes, the first occurrence. Right. Is this making sense now? This is, this is really is, uh, someone is saying, at least someone is nodding, that's a good sign. Although one is not very representative here, but at least we know there's hope, right? <laughs> okay, uh, what, what Count does is, and this ties into his question, right, slightly. What Count, what count does is it counts the number of occurrences of a particular what? Item in the list. If, uh, aha, that's a thing here. Well, what do you suppose Count will return here? The nice gentleman here. Uh, he said it, right? <laughs> because there's, there's no x, right? There's no uppercase x in values there. Zero, right? Is this making sense? This is easy stuff. Hi. Of what? If, there's, if there was no what? Oh, it, it gives an error because uh, index has a required parameter. You mean, you mean if we call L dot, dot index like that? It's a, uh, so it's a required like, parameter. You need to feed it to the function during the invocation process. Sorry, count. You're saying list dot? If, if we say list. No, no, it's, again, it's a look at this. Look at this is, this is very important, right? Look at, uh, look at the, the way we are specifying the signature here. X is a required parameter. So if you evoke count on a list without any parameter, then it's an error. It's a runtime error, right? The case is different for, diff for, for methods that take in default values, right? This is default. This is just the syntax I'm using to signal the fact that I like is a default you know, formal parameter here, right? Sort just sorts your list. Oh, hi. So there's an interesting question. People are already thinking here. He's saying his question is, <coughs> if let's say you have, uh, and I'm using chalk. I I, I don't know. <laughs> He's saying if. Uh, He's saying, how, how can we, based on what we've looked at so far, how can we figure out, uh, what's, how can we figure out the positions of, of these? <coughs> oh, come on. So here's the thing. We have what? We, we, we've learned a, a couple of things here. We have learned, uh, Well, this returns the first occurrence, right? Okay, this is one thing we've learned. Uh, no, but, the, but, but here's the thing. Here's something else we've, 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 we've learned, right? Uh, we've learned that uh, if this is L, then we can loop into L, right? If we loop into L, if we say for, why am I doing this? If we say for, <laughs> if, if we say, look at this, right? If we, if we have one, two, three, right? Can't we do this for i in L, right? Is there another quicker way than doing it? Yeah. Like a, a call one function. But, but you, you know what the problem is here? If you have like multiple items in there, uh, I, I don't know of any pre-built pre method within the list class that does that. No. Would it be useful for that you could easily implement your function, right, to return a list that contains the indices of that item. Yeah. So you could do that. Yeah. 
it's getting really interesting. There, there, are not, there are just a few. We are almost there, right? Uh, I mean, these are easy, mostly easy things here. So what reverse does is it does, it does as the name suggests here. It just, uh, so you have, you have your, you have your, you have your list, you know, uh, as five, four, three, two, and one. If you evoke reverse, uh, it, it returns the reverse version of the list, right? And, and I want you to not forget the fact that there are things that are common and uncommon for most of these things. You know, this method, for instance, does not take in any formal parameter. It does not return any value, which makes sense because what you're interested in is just reversing that list, right? Right. And and all like every every time you're evoking these methods on on the same list instance, the 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 fact that lists are mutable means that you are changing that list, right? So it's, it's, it's unlike what we do when we say A is equal to one, and then we say A, or we say B is equal to A, and then we say, uh, what is B? If we change A, B will still be the same, right? Because those are like different copies, right, that we're creating, right? We are reassigning values. But what we're doing here is we are, we are modifying the same thing, right? Because it's mutable, okay? <laughs> Uh, what copy does is uh, it does what it says, you know. We, we do a lot of, you know, copy pasting here. Uh, and someone is packing the bag, is it? Oh my God. Uh, uh, we're almost there, right? Uh, so what copy does is it just, it makes a copy of your list, you know, and this is really useful when you are, if you're trying to avoid, remember that when you're invoking these methods on, on the list, what happens is you're modifying the list, right? So if if during your implementation you're trying to avoid that, what you can do is you can, before you actually start evoking these methods, you can make a copy of that original list, right? You make a copy and then you start modifying your list, bearing in mind that you already have the original copy. <laughs> Finally, what clear does is it purges, right? It purges. It purges your entire list, it deletes it, right? Delete all, and that's it, it's gone, right? you end up with an empty list. I, I, we'll, we'll probably begin with, uh, you know what I did? I put out Vula and I, I put out like a database of, well not a database, I, I just, I, I exported to a CSV file um, all the participants for CSC 1017F um, and I thought it would be interesting for us to like start manipulating this. So we'll start with this with this thing, and we'll look at this, right? Oh, is it? So something else I did is, and I thought this would be an exercise, what I did before we go, right? Well, seeing as I've been thinking about this, because when you have problems, right, uh, it's always nice to kind of put things into perspective, right? Uh, so what I've done is beginning, uh, beginning next, um, well, next time we meet here, right? Uh, because I'm, I'm tired of, we are tired of, uh, we are tired of uh, people, you know, uh, people, the same people participating. We, we want it to be an all-inclusive kind of thing, right? Oh, come on. What the hell is this? You know what, we'll, we'll, I wanted to showcase something, but we'll, we'll look at this next week. I mean, to... Uh, Day after tomorrow. There's a lab session. Uh, there's a lab session. Too.